Good afternoon, attendees. Welcome to the Osteoporosis and Fall Prevention Festival organized by SATACOM Health. I'm Dalila, your host for today. Let us welcome our illustrious speaker, Ms. Zoe An Sui Yi, a senior physiotherapist at SATACOM Health, who will be sharing about OAME exercises. Zoe graduated from Nanyang Polytechnic with a diploma in physiotherapy and went on to obtain her bachelor's with honors in physiotherapy with SITTCD. Take note that you're only able to ask questions during the Q&A session at the end of the talk, either through the chat box, Q&A chat box, or you can raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Now, I'll pass the time to Ms. Zoe Ang Sui Yi. Hi. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, let me share. Mm. Hi, so today uh, my name is Zoe. I'm a phys uh, senior physiotherapist from SATA. So today I'll be mainly sharing on what are the exercises that um, elderly can do um, to help to prevent falls. Okay, so before we go into the exercises, let me just un um, uh, share a little bit about um, falls and its prevalence in Singapore, especially. Um, we'll go into the exercises and also show how these exercises can be done in the community setting. Okay, so falls refers, uh, refers to an unexpected event in which the participants comes to rest on the floor, ground or lower level. Okay, so based on um, the Singapore's National Registry Disease Office, um, the statistics in 2012 shows that um, there is 277.7 per 1,000 falls in elderly aged 60 years and older. And that was in, um, this statistics was in 2012. So in a more recent study by SIT, it shows that um, in a span of three weeks, 5.7% of the participants experienced near falls. Uh, and then 55.7, uh, there was reports of 5.7% of near falls. 53.3% um, of these elderly um, experienced uh, near falls once. And then half of them experienced um, near falls more than two times. Okay, so that's uh, with false with the increase, and this statistics is um in shown in the community dwelling elderly, and they are sixty five years and above. Okay, so since falls are so prevalent, um. If there are interventions that we can do to help to prevent falls. So today I'm covering mostly on what are the exercises that you can do in falls. Uh, sorry, uh, no sound? Hi. Is that, uh, can everybody hear? Sound is on? Ah, okay, can, okay. So some of the simple exercises that we can do are, Strengthening exercises. So mainly strengthening exercises that we are looking at uh, a strengthening of the hip muscles the buttock muscles and the thigh muscles. So I'll go through one by one and what are the exercises that can be done. Okay, so hip extension mainly means to move the hip backwards. So for strengthening exercises, you're supposed to hold there for 10 
10 seconds and you're supposed to do two sets of 10 repetitions. Each for, for the next exercise, abduction exercise is also to work on your buttock muscles. Um, you're supposed to open your legs to the side and then hold there for 10 seconds and then pull back. So repetitions will be two sets of 10 repetitions as well. Squats will be um, holding onto a chair, squat down, hold for 10 seconds and then stand up. For elderly who cannot do that, you can start off with a reverse. You can start off with sitting first and go into standing. So this aims to help to strengthen your quadriceps muscles. So these are um, for the exercise intensity for this is also two reps, uh, two sets of 10 reps. 10 seconds hold. The next one is to strengthen your calf, ex uh, your calf muscles, which is here, this one. So calf muscles are important, essential in uh, breaking falls as well. So basically what you need to do is uh, um, stand on your toes, hold there for 10 seconds, come down, uh, perform 10 repetitions, uh, two sets. And then lastly, it's, um, okay. Uh, the next one is to increase, uh, to raise up your toes. This is to work on the smaller chin muscles on uh, at the side of your leg. So it helps to increase um, ankle proprioception as well. So what you're supposed to do is just to hold there for 10 seconds, lift up, make sure that your buttock do not lean back when you do these exercises. And then hold there for 10 seconds, put down two repetitions, uh, uh, two, 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 rep two sets of 10 repetitions. And the last one is to step up. Step up meaning you can do it at any fitness corner or you can do a stairs. Um, this works on the thigh muscles to straighten your knee. So what you're supposed to do is just to step up, especially for elderly with weaker legs, um, it will be good to hold on to the railing first before you step up. And then you're supposed to do about 30 to 50 repetitions. Um, for elderly who are more, who are weaker or, or are more frail, you might want to start with 10, slowly progress by 10, go up to 20 and then 30. Okay, the next part will be strengthening exercises, uh, balance exercises. So, walking in line, meaning, uh, walking in a line, meaning to walk, um, with your heel onto uh, your heel just in front of your toes. This is to train on your balance because you walk in a narrower base of support. Um, this one you can do it holding on a support and then after that progress with without the support. Um, sideways walking, um, just walk sideways, open sideways. And then this is actually to work the side, um, the side hip muscles as well. And then backwards walking is to work on your balance and your uh, buttock muscles as well. And then lastly, um, standing on one leg. Uh, to note, um, when you stand on one leg, just try not to lean too much onto one side, whereby uh, your body is tilting to one side. Just make sure that it's in neutral. Um, your hips are in neutral. So how you can do is to hold onto a support and then slowly progress to one without support. Okay, so how can we apply these exercises in a fitness corner setting or even at home? So some of these exercises, aerobic exercises, um, you can do it, uh, aerobic exercises meaning um, exercises that are good for your cardiovascular, good for your stamina. So um, these are the machines in your fitness corner. So uh, some of the modalities that are available in the fitness corners includes stepper, uh, your eclipses, uh, you can do cycling, some you can do rowing, and then you can even do, um, this is upper limb cycle. So the next one will be strengthening exercises as I mentioned in the videos, uh, the slides earlier. Strengthening exercises, mainly you can hold on to this. And then you can do your squats, hip abduction, hip extension, calf raises, knee extension here. If not, alternatively, you can do the step up 
at the platforms that are available. Uh, um, platforms are usually not available everywhere, but there are smaller steps where we can step up and that you can strength, uh, train on your knee extensors. Okay. So balance exercises and the fitness corner. You can hold on to this red bars over here and just do your sideways walking, your crossover walking, your heel to toe walking, or your even your single leg stance. Um, and then lastly, other exercises that you can do, uh, stretching exercises. Um, this, if you see, it's actually a, how to say, a, a side, an inclined board, whereby it's slightly inclined. So what elderly are supposed to do, you're supposed to hold onto a bar, step onto the step board and lean yourself forward. So this will help to stretch out your calf muscles. Um, so calf muscles, you're supposed to usually hold for, each stretch you're supposed to hold for about 30 seconds hold. And I would say that um, you will do two to three repetitions before you start any exercises. And then the last part will be actually quadricep stretch. It's the same, you can hold onto any support and then just hold there and then stretch out the front of your thighs. Okay, so some other exercises that are available in the community in Singapore are actually uh, group exercises. So this group exercises, there are many two, uh, two types of exercises that, uh, that will be useful in helping to prevent falls. So the first one is actually Zumba Go. Um, although there is no studies to say that Zumba Go has a direct correlation with um, reducing falls, however, Zoom, um, Zumba Go is useful in helping to improve in your cardiovascular and your stamina. So what does Zumba Go mean? Zumba Go is actually Zumba that is adapted to elderly. And these exercises can be performed either in sitting or in standing. Yeah. So just to show an example of what Zumba Go is. Give me a moment, then I will start again. Okay. 
Good times. You say. Got it. Let's go. Uh huh. You say. Oh. No, I just can't. Walk to me. I just can't. Walk back. Now you say. One more time. Yes. Got it. Now let's do the sunshine. So, so uh, Zoom go, uh, Zumba Go is actually available in a lot of CCs um, and even Active SG. Um, understand that they were not organizing group classes, uh, physical group classes for a while, but um, these exercises, um, they are available online. Uh, you can go into their YouTube channels to go and see um, what other exercise uh, be gyms online, okay? So um, if, let's say, if uh, Zumba Go is too active for you, another option that you can opt for is actually Tai Chi. Um, tai Chi is actually shown in, to have a direct correlation in reduction of falls. So in a coping review, it's actually shown that um, Tai Chi actually helps to reduce the rates of fall by 19%. And it reduced the number of fallers by 20%. 20, 20%. Okay, so Tai Chi. An example of what Tai Chi is. Tai Chi, some of the benefits of Tai Chi um, is actually shown to improve in standing balance, um, shown to improve in muscle strength, shown to improve in stamina, and also joint flexibility, mainly the shoulders and the knee. So similarly, um, there are a lot of Tai Chi classes there in the um, community. Uh, so this, the trainer, um, Miss Jennifer Chong, she actually is a Tai Chi trainer. She trained a trainer and then they goes about to train um, trainers in different organizations. So I understand that they do con they, uh, conduct um, Tai Chi classes as well, um, but because of the pandemic, they stopped. But um, she also has um, resources online. Uh, this is the YouTube link, uh, YouTube channel that she uploads exercises. So participants actually go up. If you're interested, you can actually go onto the YouTube link um, to check out like what are the exercises that um, what is the regime that you can do for Tai Chi. Yeah. So with that, I come to an end of um presentation. Okay. Um any questions? Ah, uh, sure.
Okay, frequency of exercises to do. For aerobic exercises, um, it's best to do about 30 minutes a day. So it can be in the form of cycling, it can be in the form of climbing stairs. Climbing stairs may be a little bit too strenuous, but just gentle walking for half an hour per day. Um, so if let's say if let's say it's raining at home, we can do stepping exercises. How do I do step up exercises at home? Yep. So alternatively, if you have any steps at home, you can do the stepping up exercises. If not, you can modify it in the sense that you can do lunges and then step up. Or even, uh, how do I say, those footstools. You can buy those footstools and then do stepping up exercises at home. I can just show how you can modify and do a step up exercises at home. So let's say if you're doing a step up exercises, I'm going sideways. You can just go into a bending position and then step up. You can do it alternate, or you can alternate and do a lunge if you can do not have a step board at home. Only want to support lunge and then after that step up. Okay. Only want to support, bend your knees. And then step up. So for strengthening exercises, you are supposed to do about 10 repetitions, two sets per day. What is that? Qigong. Qigong is similar to Tai Chi as well. There's a, a question um, that asking if you can do Qigong as well. Yes, Qigong you can do. Um, but our Qigong is more directed to cardiovascular balance as well. And then seniors who have mobility issues, it depends on what are the mobility issues that they have. Um, these exercises are in static position. If let's say they, if standing is an issue, um, you can start off with, uh, if moving is an issue, you can just start off standing, static, go onto a support and do the standing exercises. Are there any exercises that should be? There is another question whereby are there any exercises that should be avoided for those with high um with heart conditions and high blood pressure? Um, for elderly who have known to have high blood pressure, uh, it depends. You might want to measure your monitor your blood pressure pre and post exercise. I would say that if if it's more than one hundred and sixty, uh. 160, it's not advisable to do strenuous exercise, just do normal walking would do. So, um, yeah. Uh, in general, with um, elderly with high blood pressure or heart conditions, I would say that just gentle walking would do. You can start off with gentle walking and then you slowly progress to uh, brisk walking. Or slowly, you can start off with a few stepping exercises uh, with at the stairs, slowly do stepping exercises, monitor your blood pressure and your um, heart rate. If let's say it's too strenuous, then you might want to start to slowly progress, maybe start from five repetitions, and then you can go up to five to 10 repetitions and slowly go up again. Does the community centers offer Tai Chi? How can we assess to such exercises? Where to find out more? Uh, community centers, from what I know, certain do, um, because um, the this instructor, Jennifer, she actually goes down to um, different community centers previously and then to teach Tai Chi. Um, I will be, I, if you would like, I can share
the link for the Share this. Yeah, share the link um, to the Tai Chi exercise. Okay, any demo slides for OAD? Okay, osteoarthritic knee exercises, it depends on what is the cause of your OAD. Um, I would say that for OAD, strengthening of your hip abductors, the one whereby you hold, um, that you open up to the side. Uh, strengthening your glutes, your buttock muscles, kicking your leg to the back, and then squats will be good for OAD. And so how do two squats? Okay, let me demonstrate that. Okay, so for squats, what you're supposed to do, okay, hold on to a firm support, a, a firm cable or firm uh, chair. So you're supposed to your leg uh, shoulder width apart. And you're supposed to bend your feet. Bend and squat down. So one thing to know when performing squats is that your knee is not supposed to go past your toe. So not this kind of movement. You're supposed to go backwards. And hold there for 10 seconds. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then slowly come up. Okay. So the most important thing to note is that your knee don't go past your toes. So you're keeping, you're pushing your buttock backwards. So in that sense, you actually work your buttocks and don't uh, put too much pressure on your knee. How many seconds to hold for heart raises? Uh, 10 seconds as well. So it's eight to, eight to 10 repetitions, 10 seconds, two to three sets. Okay, then another question was, exercise that strengthened the core. Um, for, Core in general, I would say core in general will be actually exercises whereby you perform in lying. Um, anything that has to do with you lifting up your leg when you're doing uh, when you're in lying down actually works on your core. Um, alternatively, what you can do in sitting is something that you can do like that. This is what we call heat traction. This is still um, unsupported. You guys, uh, you guys cannot see my chair. But yeah, um, sit unsupported. Okay, that means unsupported, meaning you're not sitting, uh, leaning against uh, many chairs or stuff. Okay, what you can do is actually just to lift up your leg. You can see. Let me do like this. Okay, you are supposed to just lift up and then hold it for 10 seconds or elderly, you can work on your core this way. So if you're good, you can actually do this kind of thing, leave up two, and then after that, return your knee in this position. If, if let's say you're doing it in you can actually do this kind of position. This actually works on your core a lot. Hold there for 10 seconds, make sure that you do not lean back, and then come down. Forward. Down. Alternatively, lift up. Both legs. Down. Lift up both legs. You can try. So, sorry. Just lift up. Lift up. Hold there for 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Down. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, nine, ten, nine, ten, Um, if one already has knee pain, can he or she still do squats? It depends on how severe is your knee pain. Um, you for people with very severe knee pain, you might not you might want to choose not to squat down too low because the lower that you go, the more pressure it places on your knee. So instead of going down to ninety degrees, probably go halfway. And not your screen. Uh, I think the screen, this one is the maximum. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but people with knee squat, um, let's say people with knee pain, what you what you can do is actually instead of going all the way down, you can go just halfway. So What I would suggest for people with fully is if you place a pillow in between, so sit and then squat. So this kind of activates the inner thigh muscles and that helps to reduce the strain on your knee as well. For heat extension, abduction, do we need to hold? Yes, 10 seconds each. And then after that, you put down. Do for 10 repetitions. So, can elder, there's two questions in the QA. Can elderly currently walking with a walking stick do this? Yes, they can do. So, if you, um, people walking with a walking stick, um, if you realize these exercises, you can actually, they are rather static and you can do it with support. So with external supports, it actually helps to make it safer for you to do your exercises. So this strengthening exercises, you can actually do both at home or even outdoors because it's rather static and quite simple for you to do. After a fall, can we still do exercise if the knee is still in the stage of recovery? Yes, you can. You can do simple ones. Um, it depends on what is the injury to your knee. What you would, what I would suggest is to go slow. Maybe you would want to avoid going um, into squats first. What you can do is actually just sitting and then uh, straightening your knee. So I can, maybe I can move my background so that it's easier for you guys to see as well. So exercises that you can do for after a knee injury, simple ones, you can do things like sitting in this position first and then straightening your knee. And then slowly go down. This one is quite gentle. You find that it is a little bit too gentle. What you can do is you can buy those resistance bands or you can put ankle weights at your, your knee to slowly increase the weight to overload your muscles. And then for 10 seconds and then come down. This one also hold there for 10 seconds and then come down. Okay. So alternatively, those with knee injury, you, as I said just now, um, it's similar to people with OA knee. In terms of squats, you can do halfway first, don't go all the way. And then after that, uh, hold in the position statically 10 seconds and then slowly stand up. Uh, 
uh, yeah. any more questions? Okay. Since there is no more question. Uh, oh, right. Okay. Okay. Step up exercise again and lower spine pain exercise. Okay. Okay. So what you can do for this is to modify for a step up. So what you can do is actually to bend down. So mean is a mimic of how a step is and then to bend slowly, not to go all the way down, go there, and then after that step up. Okay. So to make it more challenging, you can do in this position, step up and then go into this position and then come back. So this works on both your hip muscles and then your Tight muscles as well. Now, if let's say I'm standing on my right leg, I'm actually working on the right buttock muscles and the right uh, right thigh muscles. So if let's say you want to train on the left one, you'll be the one that you're doing uh, standing statically. Uh, for hip, for let's say for spine. Spine pain, it really depends on what is the cause of your spine pain. Um, sometimes it could be a uh, this or it could be a uh, postural issue or it could be a joint issue. So um, I would suggest for uh, people with low back pain, if it's really urgent, if it's really, um, how do they, if it's really, this come uh, causing you a lot of discomfort and then affecting your daily uh, your activities of daily living. Do go and see a physiotherapist. Um, if let's say you have low, uh, low back pain, during when you're having low back pain, it will be things that you can help to reduce the pain will be um, hip packs, stretching exercises. Yeah, so it really depends on what is the cause of your low back pain. I would say that most of the people now, um, it will be due to, during, especially in COVID, we do see that a lot of people is sitting and prolonged sitting is actually causing you to have back pain. So simple, simple things that you can do are actually just to stand up, walk, break your activities. Alternatively, what you can do, is actually just bend your to straighten up your spine and extend. This is what we call spine extension. Hold there for 10 seconds and then come back. Alternatively, you can do against the wall, but the idea is for you to bend your back and increase the curve at the back. Because what happens is that a lot of people are having pain from bending forward. So what you want to do is to reverse and to go into this position instead. So try avoiding sitting for too long, not more than half an hour. What you can do is, let's say if you're in an office, what you can do is to break and have um, frequent walks every half an hour, go and get, um, go and drink, uh, go and get a drink or go to the toilet, that kind of thing. If you start to feel any strain in your back, yeah, but, as I said, the back can be because of multiple issues. If let's say you have surgery, you have done any surgery before, if it's hurt your disc before, then maybe it will be it will be safer, much safer if you go and consult a physiotherapist for your back pain.
warm up exercises. Some of the warm up exercises that I, that I would advise is you can do stepping, just stepping on the uh, marching on the spot. If not, you can do just one, just do gentle walking. Um, warm up. The main the main purpose of warm up exercise, um, as its name suggests, is actually increase your body temperature so anything that actually helps to increase your body temperature like walking any activities where actually is a warm-up exercise so walking marching on the spot kind of thing would be good um for my exercise um but do note that warm-up and stretching exercises are different warm-up is to increase your body temperature stretching exercises is to get your muscles to be less uh, stiff and then condition your muscles prior to doing the exercise. So warm-up is usually just walking, stepping exercise, but uh, stretching exercises will be things that you hold for 30 seconds to make sure that your muscles is more flexible before an onset of exercise. So stretching exercises will be um, like just now when I uh, in the in the slides itself, calf stretches, by you just stand against, lean against a wall, or something like that. You can lean, just lean against a step and then lean forward. This one will be a stretching of your stretching for your calf. Hold there for 30 seconds. And then after that, go here. And then the other the, the other main warm-up muscles that you can do is your hamstring and your quads. Quads will be just anything that you bend. Oops. So just make sure that your feet is your thigh is uh, parallel. Now hold that for 30 seconds. Hamstring muscles at the back is just anything that you straighten your knee this way and then just lean forward. Hold that for 30 seconds as well. You're supposed to feel the stretch the back of your thumb. Any exercise to improve posture? Sitting upright would. Um, it depends on what is your postural fault. Usually what we will say that is people are very hunchback. So what you can do is just to, especially in office or uh, elderly, what you can do is just to maintain upright sitting, not slouching. Just maintain upright would do. This will help to improve your um, your spine uh, to get uh, to get there uh, to be a gentle curve at the back. And then if let's say you're talking about a lot of um, people with very kyphotic, that means being hunchback. So what you can do is actually do this kind of exercise. Lean against a wall. So imagine there is a pillow over here. Just lean and then stretch this front muscles over here. This one is to improve the posture at your trunk area, which is this portion of your back from here to here. So what you're supposed to do is just to maintain, um, maintain upright, squeeze your muscle at the back, or if not, you can do this kind of stretching exercises to help to improve the posture. How to do quartz muscle if have full A and cannot pull? Uh, okay. There is a way of how you can do quartz. Um, let's see. It's a little challenging. Let me see my Oops. Sorry. Okay, just let me demonstrate now. Okay. For especially for elderly, what you can do okay. at, the, at the edge of your bed, drop down, and then bend your knee at the back. So in this sense, actually stretching your thigh muscles. So to increase stretch of arms here. So that your hip is down and then you're bending your knee. Alternatively, you can do kind of thing whereby you put your knee on your surface and then you can 
This is also a stretching of your thigh muscles. So to stretch is also a 30 seconds hold. Yeah. So if let's say you have really, uh, there are people whereby they say that um, my patients, they do say that they have shorter hands. So what you can do is the same exercise, you can use a towel to pull your, leg, your knee up to the back instead. Okay. Okay, Ken. So... So this will be the last question. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Zoe, for sharing. It was very informative for all of us. And thank you, attendees, for attending the talk. We hope you have enjoyed the session and hope to see you soon in other webinars that we will be organizing. If you have any other inquiries on what was shared earlier, feel free to drop us an email at mediacontact at sata.com.sg or call our hotline at 6. 244-6688. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Take care.